Mother's Day is right around the corner, and I, for one, am looking forward to the big day. And what I love is that on this day, we get the chance to honor all moms, you know, from every walk of life, including stepmoms, godmoms, and single moms. One of my favorite mom categories because I myself am the proud product of a beautiful, hardworking single mom. Well, my guest today is a hilarious comedian and lovely mother who has no problem sharing what it's really like living the single life while raising a teenager. Sherry Shepard is here with me now to talk about that, her plans for Mother's Day, and the scoop on her new daytime talk show, Sherry. Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm so good and so excited to have you here. Well, congratulations on Sherry. Uh, It's set to premiere this fall on Fox, right? And and this is certainly not your first time in the hosting seat. You guest hosted Wendy Williams while she was recovering from health challenges. And and throwback fans of yours will always have a soft spot for you when you were co-host on The View. But now it's all about you. So what was it like when you got the news and what can fans expect? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, when Debmar Mercury came to me and offered me my own talk show, it was literally like, oh, my. Like when you win a beauty pageant. Ah! (laughs) Me? (laughs) So oh, um, it literally was something that was such a blessing because it's been a dream of mine for since I was a little girl to have a talk show and to see that it came through, even though it took a, a period of time for it to come. But I needed to be ready. I wasn't ready when I wanted mm. it. I was ready when the offer was presented to me. So I was ecstatic. Just I'm excited to bring my brand of humor and lightness and fun to the daytime talk show space. Oh my goodness, your fans are excited. That's who's excited about this. It's going to be amazing. Um, How does this fit into mom life for you? A daytime talk show, everyone can imagine how grueling that is. So uh, what did you think in terms of making that schedule work? Girl, as soon as I found out the show, I said, the show's going to be called Sherry, right? And they said, yes. I was like, can my son get a job at the show? (laughs) That's the first thing I thought. Okay, now this boy is going to be working and contributing to my household. But I thought, you know, doing a daytime talk show is such a great thing for me being a single mom because we do it and I'm off by a certain time. Now I still got to do my research and and all of that, but I still can be home. I st- that's what I loved about being on The View. I was at all of Jeffrey's plays and extracurricular activities. So I'm looking forward to that again. Although he's 17, I don't know if he really will want me at his extracurricular activities, <laughs> but I'm you know, being there. Well, I mean, tell us a little bit about Jeffrey, what he's into now, what he's like, and, and you guys' relationship. Girl, you know, it's, it's Mother's Day, so of course I'm putting together a compilation of video clips. And I have video clips of him when he was young. And, Mommy, I love you. Mommy, you're my favorite actress. And I, I was crying all day. Now all my videos are, I told you not to post me. Turn off the camera. Why are you in my room? Like, Aww. his voice is even deeper. But I just, gosh, my, my son is a young man now. He just went to his first prom. And he's like, you know, I'm moving out in a year. So you better go bring it in and give me a hug because this is it. And I go, where did, where did all my time with my child go? Wait, 17? He's 17 years old. He's been manifesting moving to New York for the last four years. And I said, wow, you've been manifesting this. And he goes, but I didn't manifest you coming. But hey, mama's always in your manifestation. Don't ever forget it. So he's into, gosh, video games and sports. And he wants a girlfriend. And, you know, he doesn't want to do too much stuff with me now because he's trying to find his independence as a young man. And I support that. Oh, I love it. Tell me just a little bit about the challenges when it comes to raising a teen. You hear so much about those years. <laughs> so what has that been like for you? If you talk to somebody with a teenage girl, woo! Every day I see teenage girls, I'm like, thank you, Lord, I got a son. <laughs> Pop your son oh, no. upside the head and go knock it off. And then, they, you know, they just... <laughs> they fart in front of you and walk away. It's not that big of a deal. But with boys, it's, you know, raising them to be young men, raising them to be, you know, respectful and um, just, you know, to be compassionate. Those are the qualities that I, I want and I'm a mother. And it is not taking it personally when they pull away because they want their independence. 
That's the hardest thing. It's also being a single mom, I have to work. I think somebody was saying that, um, you know, they they took off their uh, from their career to be with their child. I can't yeah. do that. Like my stuff still has to keep going. I, I'm on the road now with Babyface and the R&B singer Kim, 20 cities. And I haven't seen Jeffrey for almost a month. And thankfully he's older, but it's like I told him, if, if mom doesn't work, the whole house of cards fall. And so can you spell homeless with a K? It, that's exactly what it will be. So, you know, I'm hoping that my son will see that I am doing what I love because he sees that his mom is doing it. And I don't, I try not to take on that guilt. You know, I am yeah. doing the best that I can. And I try to make sure we have, when I am home, that we have that quality time that we do. Now, I don't, I can't, I can't um, speak for him not wanting me in his room, but I go and lay <laughs> on that bed and watch, you know, base, basketball with him and baseball. I ask a lot of questions, which I found out he does not like. But I really try to make our time. I'm watching a game, mom. That's what he says. That's exactly what he says. What was with all the questions? Stop. Like, but I like that time that we have together. Well, what about when it comes to being a mom in the public eye, which is a whole different ball game? I mean, fans have watched your ups and downs and ups again. I mean, you've waded through divorce and, and custody battles and all of these different things. Um, one, who got you through? Who's in that village that helped you get through those periods? And will that be factored into the show at all, your motherhood journey? Oh, absolutely. Everybody who knows me knows mother, being a mother is like the biggest accomplishment task that I've ever had in my life. It's my biggest insecurity being a mother. Cause I always feel like I'm doing it wrong. And so I've had a village. Now the women that you don't know are my Vondas, my Cynthia's, my Angelina's, the women that you do know are my Niecy Nash's, my Kim Whitley's, my Garcelle Bouvet's. Those, <laughs> those are the people that you might know. And um, they are my village of people that I go to for advice that I go to when I don't feel like I am um, everything that Jeffrey needs me to be there in my head. When I say, you know, when Jeffrey says to me, uh, you know, why can't you be like regular moms? Why can't you have a regular job? Why can't you wear your real hair? It is like, I call up Nisi and I go, he wants me to wear my real hair, you know? And she goes, girl, no, he don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> so my, I, I have a very strong village of people who help me with Jeffrey. If I have to go out of town, I have very strong mentors in his life that will, you know, be there in a pinch to help me with Jeffrey. So wow. I think creating a village is really important. For mom and for and for the kid, for sure. So tell me just a little bit about um, Jeffrey as a little tiny baby. I want to go back because Mother's Day is one of those nostalgic moments where you look back on like, oh my goodness, I made that. So he struggled as an infant, right? Tell me, tell me the story. Uh, my son was born at 25 weeks. He weighed a pound, 10 ounces, and he literally almost died. He had all kinds of issues, brain bleeds, and they said he was going to have a lot of mental challenges. And mm. we were going to, my husband at the time and I were going to let him go to heaven because I was pregnant with twins and I lost a sister. And like through a miracle, literally at the last minute was a miracle. Niecy Nash was there hollering and hooping and screaming. And uh, it was a miracle where he was not breathing, completely not breathing. And he had a hole in his intestines. And so we, they put him in his little clothes and put him in my arms for him to take his last breath. And literally right before they pulled those tubes, the doctor, the neonatal intensive care doctor came in and said, that hole in his intestines has completely healed. And so where it was all black and blue, it was all pretty brown. So I still call it my chocolate drive because it was pretty brown. Wow. Niecy Nash fell all over the isolate screaming. They had to get her. And I just cried and he gripped his breathing tube. He wasn't even able to move. He gripped his breathing tube. And so I just knew, you know what? Mm. God, you got something special for this one. Then I was like, I don't know why you picked me because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. And he just was always, uh, you know, they said he wasn't going to be able to walk, talk, and do any of those things that he was going to have mental challenges. And so every time my son says to me, mom, will you put on a different wig? He can talk. I don't care what he said. How do I look? <laughs> Mama, your belly looks big. I don't care. Thank you. <laughs> He's got a very dry sense of humor. He's funny as all get up. And he's a compassionate person. If he sees somebody in a wheelchair or different circumstances, he will say, Mom, why are my eyes watering? And he literally wants to help. So I love the son that I have. And even now, 
you know, my son has his challenges, but he pushes through. He just, he pushes through and he inspires me a lot. He says to me, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to be, have all these NFTs and I'm going to have, be in the metaverse and I'm going to be a doctor. And I'm like, you going to be a comic. That's what you're going to be. Your dad is a comic. Your mom is a comic. Okay. Stop with this. I'm going to be a doctor. You are going to be in my oh, basement. Oh, wow. You're in your dad on flip flops, eating my food while you tell me my stage time is 11 o'clock tonight because I'm working on new jokes. So, <laughs> I'm like, it's like people who sing. Their kids are singers. I am a mm -hmm. comic, I'm an actor, and that's what I expect my son to be doing. If he's a doctor, I'll be a proud mama. If he's a preacher, I'm going to be a proud mama with all that fruit on my head with the hat and the pretty dress. <laughs> Not the fruit. <laughs> oh, yes. All the fruit on top of my head with a little prayer cloth. Because somebody said when he was little, he was they prophesied and said he was going to be a preacher. So as long mm. as he's a preacher that's funny and my DNA <laughs> is in there, I'll be happy. Body preacher. Okay, let's talk about mom, though. Mother's Day. So let's talk about mom. How are you doing? And I'm wondering how you're doing in the love department. We we hear a lot about, you know, the dating apps, especially amid the pandemic, just ballooning. Um, how's it going out there? Girl, you know what I'm doing that I've never done before that all my friends got on me about is dating. Like, I've always went with one person and I was like, we got to get married. Uh, we I'm, in, I'm horny. We got to get married. I can't, I can't be single. <laughs> but the church says, I started dating. I started dating more than one person. I started dating so I could find out about how you have conversation. How do you flirt? How do you walk away without, you know, putting all that stuff on it? I wanted to date to see what it felt like to just somebody take you out and treat you to dinner and you laugh. And then you can say it was great and move on. I've been ghosted. I've been, I've dated successful what? people. Girl, yeah, that ghosting is real. Literally. Will you have a great time and then they don't call you back? I have been out with successful men who don't have a lot of time. They're as busy as me, so they don't have a lot. I've been out with men who go, e your uterus is not working and I want some children. Well, I thought I told you that on the first date. My uterus is, no, sir, no children. So um, it has really allowed me to appreciate men, to really know what I want, and just be happy, I, not, not trying to rush anything. So that is where I'm at. And I'm having fun. I'm like, don't give in to all those the men on the internet that want to tell you, you know, after 40, you washed up and you're not going to find anybody. That's not true. That's, I'm always excited about who I'm going to meet. And it's like, this is my year or years of saying yes. So if you want to go out, as long as you ain't no serial killer, yeah, let's go out and have a good time. <laughs> I need I need a I need a who wants to date Sherry segment on this show. I cannot wait to see. I challenge women to if you like somebody, ask them out. Don't wait. Do you know I sent a message to Lenny Kravitz? I was like, you look cute. You keep wearing them dang on leather pants with no shirt on. And I like <laughs> What are you doing? You dating anybody, Lenny? Now I sent it through somebody. I sent it through Lee Daniel. So you gotta get your connections right. And I was okay. like, I yeah. Have three. I need my cheese, my trees chopped. So what you doing? <laughs> oh God. Okay. Last but not least, what do you want for Mother's Day, Sherry? I want my son to make me a video telling me how much he loves me and what I've done for him as a mother. So I can play it for him uh, when he wants to go over his girlfriend's house for Christmas. And uh, he's going to make me breakfast and we're going to go to the beach, Jeffrey and I. I'll get an emotional and we're just going to sit at the beach together. And watch the, because I love being at the beach. It's my favorite place. So we're going to go to the beach and he's, it's just going to be Jeffrey and me. Oh, that is so absolutely sweet. I didn't mean to make you emotional, but I, you know, it's, happy I'm Mother's Day. Every, every day I'm emotional. I'm looking at all these videos when he was a little boy and like I was sending him the videos and he's like, can you please stop sending me these videos? <laughs> and I said, well, I bet you put them on TikTok, you'll watch them. And change my name to Honey Babe 1232, you watch the videos. But <laughs> I just feel like you have to enjoy your child at every stage that they're at because you look up and then they're grown. And then you raise your children to leave. That's what you do. You raise them to be independent and to leave the nest. And I realize as this is happening, I kind of don't want them to leave. Oh, Sherry, don't <laughs> get me started. <laughs> this Girl, is amazing. You know, Thank you, you know. so much for... Look, I'm I'm not there yet. Okay, I'm not there yet, but I can already. I I'm just a nostalgic person, so I can already imagine. So don't don't you gonna make me cry? Um, <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time and happy Mother's Day. Thank you. 